more at this point in the evening. We keep moving on to having more significant business meetings. If you have a few telephone duty, you may have not on the silence, vibrator, noise or please do not worry at this time as we do not have any interruptions. Can you call the roll, please, Ms. York? Sure. Mayor Henry? Yes. Williams? Moultrie? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Glass? Here. Well, we thank you for the day. We ask that you continue to take care of, help us to have our understanding through all. Ask that you continue to help and guide our spirit, keep us in health and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. there are two separate grants that can be applied for at this time. Um, the first one I'll talk to you about is the uh, Community Development Block Grant COVID application. Like all Community Development Block Grants, the priority is to assist lower income individuals, low to moderate income, and 
the COVID program has to be um, a project that is related to COVID. The DEO, uh, the state agency that is handling this money has not been real, um, I don't know, giving a whole lot of good guidance on how to tie a low income project to COVID. Uh, one thing that can be done that is definitely low income is paying rent, mortgage, and utility assistance to individuals. Uh, that is a real um, labor intensive, I should say, project to do because you have to verify income, you have to verify whether they got any other assistance, avoid duplication of benefits, make all the payments directly to the, like to the utility or to the uh, mortgage holder or rent, rent um, property owner. Um, but that is something that is eligible. Um, they've listed other things and then as they list them, they sort of backpedal from like, they said, oh, widen sidewalks so you can have more social distancing. And I'm thinking that's pretty much a stretch, but you know, uh, one, another thing um, that they've talked about is uh, providing facilities for uh, COVID related services. So these are the kinds of things that the city can apply for. Um, can you hear me through this mask up close? Up here. Okay. So um, the city can apply for a minimum of $200,000 and a maximum of $5 million. And again, um, it, it is a single project though, that you can't just do some of this, some of that, some of the other. You have to choose a project and then that project can be funded within that limit. Um, they do want it tied to lower income. The good news for the city of Chattahoochee, at least as far as applying for grants is concerned, is that HUD, which is the federal agency that this money comes from to the state, um, they have the city of Chattahoochee at well over 51% low to moderate income. So you can do things that are considered citywide benefits. And um, so that is, uh, you know, broadens the scope a little bit. So that is um, a very brief explanation of what the CDBG COVID program is. Um, there is a pre-application deadline of March 15th. They have not announced the final application uh, deadline. It's supposed to be sometime this summer. And they're saying that if you don't get it pre app in by March 15th, you can still apply later, but they won't give you any technical assistance or review it or anything. So we are um, shooting to get something turned in by March 15th. So after now that we've had a brief summary of what the program is, it would be appropriate to for the mayor to open the floor to take public comments or suggestions, anything like that, and then after that point to discuss specific projects. For COVID. Yes, it would. Now that now they, we did uh, in the public hearing announcement, we did mention a project that's under consideration. And so we wanted to make it very clear that the public had the opportunity to submit other suggestions. So we've had that opportunity, there were none. So that needs to be on the record that we specifically asked for any other suggestions that the public might, might have. Um, now, one thing that um, we discussed with the um, Citizen Advisory Task Force was uh, mentioning the um, payment of rent, mortgage, and utilities simply because that is something that can be applied for that some people might be interested in. 
We also mentioned the um, donation of the old Southside School from the school board to the city and using the CDBG COVID monies to restore and renovate that building. Um, the Citizen Advisory Task Force, all, there were four of the five members attending and all four, it was a unanimous vote to recommend that the council apply for, or that the city apply for the Southside School Project. And we have a very preliminary budget of about three and a half million dollars, roughly, uh, is what we think it would cost. There are questions, um, quite good questions from the task force about uh, asbestos and uh, we would make sure that uh, we do asbestos testing on the building and if it is there we either abate it or determine that it is safe to cover it one or the other we would take the professional recommendation but we would include that as part of the grant application and uh, another comment was uh, there's uh, our chance of vandalism and so uh, I suggested maybe impact resistant windows um, because uh, we've mentioned that there's a good chance that the windows could be broken out. Uh, I believe that was Ms. Lenora Montgomery asked about that and I believe it was David um, <laughs> Moore, that, what was his name? Gary, Gary, Gary. Gary Moore mentioned the uh, asbestos. So uh, all of those issues could be included in the application budget, as well as the fees for engineering, architecture, and administration. So, can I ask a question about this, about our particular project now? Does, does it have to be a remodel, or can it be a, a, a removal and a, re, a new building for that? The state is not, they're, they're re reluctant to fund new buildings uh, for one thing, the time frame of, of starting from scratch, um, and so that that would be the main thing. In our architectural report, surprisingly enough, uh, we spent some time in there because we needed the information for the grant application. But the uh, the shell of that building and the interior, even the interior walls, are in much better shape than we. Had previously thought, and I had thought, um, he seemed very confident that he had something to work with, and he was really surprised himself on some of the uh, interior walls and things that he, in his analysis. Well, I was thinking about energy efficiency, energy economy. Well, all that will be fixed as part of the project. We can't say it would be as good as a new building, but yeah, we would definitely include those kind of things. Um, handicap accessibility, uh, a kitchen, mm -hmm. community kitchen, space for a food pantry expansion. Um, on the, I, I asked the architect to label some of the spaces, not that you can't do whatever you want to, but you know mm -hmm. how to, to make it apparent to the grant that the tie would be there between COVID and the uh, project would be a senior center space, mm -hmm and um help like for vaccines testing screenings things like the health department can come in so we put some labels on spaces and again you know that, that doesn't really mean anything other than it shows that we're thinking what these spaces can be used for and not only that but mr Preston was talked with like the health department and uh, uh, of course, your your senior citizen center, or the food pantry, all need space. Um, I asked the um, architect to make we. He had drawn something. I said, "Well, expand this storage mm -hmm. wall, its storage space a little more, and then on the other side of that, make an office for the senior center because they probably need to be able to close a door and have an actual office mm -hmm. of some sort." And Mr. Pressel said that the uh, food pantry needed, you know, some sort of an office space. So I told him to not put shelves everywhere, to leave a corner in there for a desk for the, the food pantry um, purposes. So, um, but we would have, you know, like 
handicap accessible um, restrooms, uh, a big community room that would have maybe roll up windows from the kitchen to be able to have food that way. Um, and uh, there would be the ability to maybe close off some of the areas with uh, folding partitions, make it multi-purpose. So I think it would be a really good project for the city. And all of those things at this stage, again, are preliminary. Mm -hmm. So it's not like anything will be locked, you know, cast in stone now. But we've, we've done some work with the architect to come up with something that we think would fit the, the community's needs and um, fit the grant program. And I'm excited about the project. I, I think it is a fundable project. I don't know if it'll get funded, but I think it is fundable. In my discussion with Dr. Cooks, you know, she was very excited because, well, you know, all we're, you all know where we are in health rankings for the state of Florida. Okay, we're at the, we're at the bottom, and you can look at disparities, health disparities. I mean, you can just go on and on. And this would, uh, for one small community in the county, uh, it will give them a chance on a monthly basis to come work on those type of issues, mm -hmm. concentrate on something, give medication, uh, things that they can do because there will actually be a facility to address those those health issues. And they uh, have benefits. If, if they've got benefits, we most definitely will try to abate that one. So yeah, it will be taken care of as it should be under this grant. And we would, we would hire the the license epa license testing company okay. to test and give the recommendations on how it needs to be handled okay. and so you're going to write the grant enough to cover all the costs nothing coming from the city right correct correct no match now of course you know there'd be operational costs yeah. later but for as far as getting it ready yes One of the things I mentioned was that by the time this thing gets funded, it's probably going to be at least this fall. And God willing, the pandemic is going to be much less of a problem at that stage. So if we were applying for money to give assistance to people, it has to be related to COVID. In other words, somebody whose income was Social Security, well, they weren't affected because that Social Security payment's still coming in. But the people whose incomes have been affected because of COVID, hopefully that will be rebounding by then. Uh, whereas this community center can be sort of a legacy project for generations. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I know Mr. Presnell's worked uh, hard on in the background dealing with the school board and I wrote up that interlocal agreement there were the environmental people say no you can't decide where you want the project to be and then until you get the environmental clearance and then you got the the people say oh we want this project ready to go and then there's a uniform act that says no you can't acquire property until you tell people what their rights are so oh it's it's these things that sort of contradict each other so um it was important to get the right wording on that in the local agreement with the school board and so hopefully that will uh, be something that the state will like to see and show progress toward uh, getting ready to go and show them the preliminary um, drawings by the architect if, if that is the project that you want to go with uh, we most definitely thank the school board for giving us that opportunity absolutely mm -hmm. Yeah, we can change it just to try to give us that opportunity. We attended that meeting last Tuesday night. Um, Councilman Moultrie was there, and they gave, you know, gave the time to their case. And actually, there was another city there about another school on property. They weren't successful, but the school board voted in favor, so that vote has been taken. And um, give us an agreement, as you had authorized me to do, you know, based on getting the grant. So it's moving along. So we would need a um, 
a vote to um, proceed with, if, if it is the council's uh, wish to go with the South Side School becoming a community center, um, that would need to be a, a vote. And, and to submit a pre-application by March 15th. What would you include in that motion to make sure we're covered with that? What would the motion be to include to make sure that we're covered? Yeah, just for serious side. Can I make a motion for the Southside Project grant? Um, with an application due by March 15th, a free application due by March 15th, 2021. Second. Yeah, it'd be the CDBD COVID program. Yes, yes. CDBD COVID program. Mayor Cameron? We told her you need to have a discussion from the floor. Okay. Yes, we need to open to the public comment. We need discussion from the public on the floor. Was it seconded? Yeah, it was seconded. Okay, yes. Mayor Henry. Yes. Williams. Yes. Moultrie. Yes. Richardson. Yes. Glass. Yes. Yes. One more. Now, now the second public hearing, um, as in the past, the city can apply for the Florida Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program. Um, this one, the maximum is 700000 which is the same amount that was received in the last application uh, just a few years ago, where it was water line replacement with a little, little paving thrown in. Um, and uh, we um, need to put on the record that this, again, is a program geared to benefit lower to moderate income people. There are four categories for the application, and I failed to mention that during the um, task force meeting. The four categories, one is housing. You can apply to rehabilitate or replace housing occupied by low to moderate income people. Uh, commercial revitalization is another one. Um, they usually only fund one in the state each year, so it's a real gamble on that. Um, the uh, third category is, is uh, neighborhood revitalization, and that's the one that the city's applied for in the past. Each of those, uh, again, the maximum is 700000 In addition to that, the city can apply for an economic development grant. That is, if you have a particular project, it's not one of those, oh, we would, you know, the field of dreams will build it and they'll come. And there has to be a specific business that says, I'm going to locate here, or I'm going to expand here, or if I don't get this assistance, I will shut down or lay off people. So in other words, the money is tied directly to jobs. Um, the maximum amount for jobs has to be less than $35,000. And um, at least 51% of the jobs have to be filled by people who are in the lower to moderate income range. Now, that is not, um, and you can also get up to a million and a half for that. That does not have the same cap. It also, you don't have to choose between economic development or one of the other three. The economic development grant you can apply for any time that if you have a business situation that you think is appropriate. You cannot give grants to businesses, so it's usually for infrastructure improvements that they need. Let's say, for example, um, a business needs to install a sprinkler system and they don't have the water pressure. So you upsize the line or, or whatever it is, a water line. That's, that would be an example. Or they need turn lanes and uh, traffic signals, things like that. You can do that. Um, but if it's going to be for their own private property, it has to be in the form of a loan. 
and then you're on the hook to repay that if the business defaults. So, um, so although again, I, I did fail to mention that to the um, task force, it does not contradict applying for one of the other three categories, neighborhood, housing, or commercial. Um, and so a lot of cities and counties will prioritize their infrastructure or things of that nature and then when they run out of infrastructure projects they switch over to housing that's one approach that is not the only approach you're free to say we want to go for housing right now because we had hurricane damage i mean it, it's your choice what you want to apply for um and so before we get into talking about what the task force said um it would be appropriate again to take public comment now that we've laid out what can be applied <clears throat> for be appropriate to open the floor for any suggestions from the public i guess i'd like to open the floor for any suggestions for the florida small cities development program or any of the four categories that have been talked about so far There's a committee in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and again, I, I, it totally slipped my mind to talk about housing. I, I just. Yeah, Lucy, we have I must be very good. <laughs> All right, so the uh, task force uh, voted unanimously to recommend that the city continue applying for water line replacement funding um, because of the poor condition of the city's water line and how it it is a real city responsibility to have safe and adequate water and so um, the city utility staff tell us which are the most severe um, problems and we try to match up the problem areas with areas that the income would qualify for this grant we understand that there could be a serious problem in an area that is not low income and it that kind of funding would just have to come from a different source this program was established by congress in 1974 to assist low to moderate income people. So there's sometimes a public, you know, question why if you have a real serious need here, but you're working there, it is, you don't get funded unless you gear it toward the income area. So we would do a door to door survey and go identify all the blocks where the need is serious and that we think could potentially be funded with the amount of money available through the grant and then um, see how the income surveys go match it up come up with our recommendations but then there would be a second public hearing on that application we fall under category number three for neighborhood development yes sir Robert, did you identify an area? When we did the last round of grants, we identified a number of them. We have some good ideas, but we were required to do the neighborhood surveys to make sure those areas are eligible. But no, man, we have plenty of water lines that would uh, easily qualify for the replacement. We just have to make sure we put them in areas of the city that gives us the highest points for our grants. We hope we don't have to get into that, but no, we could use these funds. We we had to do one last time. Yeah, um, because it was in the road. So if if it is uh, a real high percentage, uh, like more than half of the budget is for like road paving they might score that as a separate thing and it would might reduce your score a little bit so we try to keep that number under control but yeah um, drainage uh, water sewer 
a new paving or the top scoring thing. The other things are eligible. I even I even told the uh, task force that community centers are eligible. However, unlike the COVID program that only you just check a box, are you majority low to moderate income? The, com the small cities is a lot more competitive than that. So it's like the top score is 70% low to moderate income and 30% um, very low income. So you, you, uh, you try to get every point you can. So um, the a community center is not ranked as high in the goals. The, the state has a goal point system for this program. And they put the infrastructure of water, sewer, paving, and drainage up at the top. And other things are not ranked as high. Plus, your income scale probably wouldn't hit quite as high. And because it's such a seriously competitive program, my general recommendation to local governments is to go for what you what's the most competitive first. You knock out everything you can, and then through the years, you get as much of that as you can. And then you say, well, we've done all that. Now we'll shift to the things that might not get funded, but we'll give it a shot. So that way, you know, you prioritize what, what you think you can get funded first. And I mean, that's just the strategy you can use if you want to. And this, um, I'm looking at the paper we've given. This is how they give you the point. Like it says, Tohiki FSY was in 2019 was 104.43. Yeah, that is a, a part of the score. Okay, but so there's more to it than just those. Yeah, they, 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 uh, there's a community wide needs score, a special designation. For example, Chattahoochee is in the rural area of uh, opportunity. Um, grant history, you will not dare at some Local governments have not had a grant in the last five years. They'll get 100 points. You won't. Um, citizen Advisory Task Force participation, we'll, we got that one covered. Uh, minority and, and women-owned business contracts on the past grant, you will get some points for that because I did administration. I'm a certified woman-owned business. Um, your, your local government minority employee uh, employment percentage compared with the county minority population is part of the score. Or fair housing ordinance and workshop, we're knocking that one out tonight. So you get those points. Uh, if you contribute funds up to fifty thousand uh, dollars, you can you get like a point for every two thousand dollars you put in. Um, you, uh, we mentioned activity goal points. That's you know, like uh, community centers not ranked as high as a new sewer line. Okay. Um, we talked about very low income and low income. Um, the average cost per household is another thing. Fortunately, the city of Chattahoochee's population is pretty compact. It's not like a rural county where you, you know, a road paving project is just real hard to get your cost benefit, but you should do okay on that. Um, I don't know whether we're going to, uh, whether Dewberry wants to do um, the design work. I mean, whether the city wants to pay for that up front or they want to donate anything or whatever, but having your plans and specs ready, you get 50 points for that. Um, health and safety, if like if you had a sewer <laughs> treatment plant problem and you were under a consent order, you would get points for that. So you can see it's a, it's a complicated mm -hmm. scoring system. So we try to choose projects and gear them for every point we can possibly get. And we don't get a dime if we don't get funded, so. <laughs> just, just so I'm clear, the, the water project is for water supply, not sewer and stormwater drainage, right? Correct, potable water line replacement. Now, that was the recommendation. Now, it's up to the council to choose, but that was the task force recommendation.
and we do not know when the applications are going to be due. We think they're going to open the cycle in the next few months. But because we're having to do door to door surveys and, you know, basic, even if even if plans and specs aren't done, you still have to do some guesstimating on costs and how, how many linear feet. So it takes a while to put together a good application. Well, it's something that we were talking about. And I, feel like, I feel pretty comfortable with stuff that we talked about and we're trying to do. That's all you mentioned. It's good to know that the uh, committee is kind of on the same line as what we were talking about. Do you need from us a motion to allow you to continue? Yes, to, to uh, proceed with the Neighborhood Revitalization Grant for the federal fiscal year 2020 and with water line replacement. This is the federal fiscal year 2020 application cycle. Yes, ma'am. They have not announced the deadline, but when they do, they only give you like 45 days. Yeah, you just get an email. Boom. We're going to be ready. We're going to be ready. So who will do the door to door? We will. Okay. And that's going to be the new child center, we feel, or just in the area that you're planning on doing the work in? We would, uh, yeah, we would target areas, first of all, where the need is great, and we think the income might be uh, in the scale that we need. And there may be blocks that we're surprised and it doesn't qualify. There may be there's some where, oh, there's a bunch of people retired and they're temporarily unemployed. So knock that block out this right now. So we try to make our best guesses on, on that kind of thing. And then we gear it toward the size of project with, that the budget would support. Um, as I was telling the, the task force, I always like to estimate high on the cost and then if you do have money left over you identify some things in the application and call them unaddressed needs so that if you have money left over you can say okay now if we had applied for this we can rescore the application would we have gotten funded <coughs> and to add that into the project and if it works out you know if it lines up with how much money you have left then you do another block of water or whatever Okay, we should go with the water lines because we've had stuff happen recently where those are all water. Yeah. Well, I'm 60 years old. Okay. Can we get a motion to the effect of some of this? I make a motion. Regarding the potential application for a Florida Small Fee Community Developmental Block for the federal fiscal year of 2020. In the neighborhood revitalization. In the neighborhood revitalization. For water line improvement. For water line improvement. Second. Mayor Kimmy? Yes. Williams? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Clark Richardson? Yes. Glass? Yes. Okay, and just when you thought you were done with me, remember there was 10 points for fair housing? Yes. So in your packet, you have some information about uh, fair housing. We also have some uh, little hand, a couple of handouts relating to federal and uh, fair housing laws and um, you know what's been included and uh, a page for the uh, Florida Commission on Human Relations. So if anybody from the public would like any of that, we can provide that for you. 
Uh, briefly, just to, to get credit for this, I need to, tip, to state on the record that um, there's federal fair housing laws that they originally they were adopted in 1968. Um, and as through the years that has been amended and the current version is it prevents discrimination in the sale, rental and financing of dwellings. Um, and that even includes when we say sale, rental or financing, it even includes advertising and marketing. Um, and other housing related transactions such as utilities based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, and disability. So national origin, they interpret that to mean um, if someone doesn't speak English, you can't discriminate based on that because that would fall under national origin. Um, sex, the sexual orientation or transgender, all that is in, you know, interpreted to be covered under that part of the law. Um, familial status includes children under the age of 18 living with parents or legal custodians. They also interpret that to be pregnant women. Um, you can't discriminate against somebody who's, who's pregnant. Um, and people securing custody of children under 18. Age is not a protected classification. So you can say, well, I'm going to discriminate on you because, you know, I don't like your age. The only exception is, is the uh, uh, children part. Now, that does not mean you can't, uh, that it's a good thing to discriminate based on race, but it's just age. It's just not included in the federal. Um, now, a lot of the times, though, um, what happens is like elderly housing only. The, the only way you can say elderly only is something you, you can't use that as a way to get around allowing children unless it's an actual honest to God for real elderly housing complex. But you can't just say, well, this is, you know, this is adults only. That, that doesn't fly. Um, Federal fair housing laws and enforcement, you've got um, HUD and the USDOJ team up on that. So for um, Florida laws, there's the Florida Commission on Human Relations. That pretty much mirrors the, the federal laws. Sometimes HUD turns things over to the Florida Commission on Human Relations to enforce for them. And then um, local fair housing ordinance. The city of Chattahoochee does have a fair housing law and um, it includes procedures for um, conducting hearings and assisting complaints on civil uh, actions. Uh, I mean, not like legal hearings, but you know, like finding does it seem to be a valid complaint? And uh, if there is, then it would be referred on. And the um, council is actually supposed to have a fair housing administrator, and I believe you have designated a city manager for that function in the past. Um, examples of other examples of uh, illegal discrimination would be um, for under disability would be like if somebody um, says uh, I need a parking space in the front of my apartment and you know, you say, no, you've got to park way down here and they're in a wheelchair. Well, there would be a reasonable accommodation for you to say, no, you, you get this spot here. Um, tenants can make their own modifications, but the landlord does not have to pay for those, but they have to allow the tenant to make a reasonable modification if it's not going to just destroy the building. Um, they can even charge a deposit to put it back the way it was if it's, you know, appropriate. Um, so an example of uh, discrimination on familial status would be maybe charging a higher deposit for a household with children than for a household without children for the same dwelling. Even, in, even though everybody who's ever had kids knows that kids are more likely to mess it up, it, you, you still, you can't 
you can't change your, your deposit amount. Um, national origin, um, uh, like refusing to allow an interpreter when it's time to you know, negotiate a lease or something like that. That would be an example. Um, requiring or hinting that sexual favors would be required would be an exam one example of discrimination based on sex. So, um, for the record, then we need to ask if there are any questions or anything relating to fair housing. I have, I have a question. Get, get the city of Chattahoochee to adopt the fair housing standards. Yes, in, in, the, in the ordinances that I couldn't find the exact date, but I did find something that was like, um, I saw something, I thought it was 1966, and I thought, no, that can't be right, because that's before the federal fair housing. So I don't know the exact date that it started, but yes, you do have, and we have uh, had to show HUD, uh, I mean, a DEO in the past, that you do have the fair housing ordinance. Is, is, is this for there are private individuals in town, many of these other private individuals that have nothing to do with her money. Mm -hmm. This covers them as well. Yeah, there are some exceptions, like um, if you have a duplex and the owner lives on one side, they can sort of choose who lives on next to them, uh, especially if they're not advertising publicly, but if you're advertising. And like if you want it to just be your own family that rents something, that's that's your business. But if you are marketing to the public, yes. And um, they, I think there may be some uh, that allow religious like organizations to choose based on religion, but very limited exceptions. Mm -hmm. As far as the language barrier part of it, if a person is going to rent a house on the street. Um, Mm -hmm. and who has to provide the interpreter? Is that something the city has to provide? No, no, we're not, we're not no. on the hook for providing no. the interpreter. Uh, no, you, uh, this, the city just says it's illegal. We, we are supporting the federal and state laws that are already on the books. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think the way that would happen, the way that would play out would be it would be up to the individual to act, to provide their own interpreter, but then the owner or manager of the property couldn't say no based on the language issue. Now there is a, um, I did, before we advertise this meeting, I did what's called a four-factor analysis of whether or not the city of Chattahoochee is required to produce things in Spanish, for example. Um, and I did the, did the review, the statistical review, the statement of how much contact you would have with people who don't speak English well and that kind of thing. And you are not legally required to do that. You are required to, um, if somebody comes in, let's say, for example, they need to pay their utility bills and they don't have someone with them who, um, uh, speak Spanish, you're required to try to find, you know, call up somebody that you think could maybe speak Spanish, but you are not required to translate your documents at this stage. Uh, you try to help people if you can, but the percentage and number of residents in Chattahoochee that speak a language, that are what you, what's called limited English proficiency, um, is not large enough to trigger that yet. Yes, that's what, what you're asking for the council to do tonight is, is uh, say that we support the federal and state well, and actually it was just an informational presentation um, and so you would ask if anybody from the public has any questions about fair housing issues, if anybody wants any of the handouts that I've created. So you will have some of these handouts that we can 
Yes, and what what we did on the last grant and and would do again is, if you get a small city CDBG grant, you will be required to do a, a fair housing activity every quarter. So, for example, one quarter I went to the police department and I handed out air housing flyers at the police department. One quarter it might be putting something in the newspaper. Um, another time it might be um, like when we're out of this COVID thing, if you're having a public event, you could hand out little flyers there, mm -hmm. um, various things. But I did something every quarter on the last grant. Um, maybe like, for example, we probably wouldn't do this now because you you don't have a grant. But if you were doing a survey or something and you still had an open grant and hadn't closed out, you could hand out flyers doing a survey. Let's say, for example, I did one in Jacobs for a disaster recovery grant, and they still had a small cities grant open. So I handed out flyers as I was doing a survey. Mm -hmm. So you just do things like that every quarter. Okay. And then did anybody want to invite the public to a public hearing? Okay. Well, not a public hearing, but to ask if they have any questions. Or well, I'm, I'm doing that answer to the motion mm -hmm. under another statute. Oh, okay. So that we can receive any public comment mm -hmm. on the motion. Any, any public comment? Well, I think we've had our fair housing workshop. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you for what, you, what you're doing. Yeah. You're seeing the real appeal about what you're doing. You're oh. very well at work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the opportunity working with the city, with uh, Dewberry, and it's uh, been good so far. Let's do it again. Yeah. Thank you. We've added item 10A and I'll defer to the attorney since he has to, he's going to make the changes to the document that was sent to us by the county. Yeah, this is uh, your senior services contract that you do every year. And uh, I, I distributed to each of you, you'll see in paragraph in section 12, the very last sentence, I have made the same change to this as I did the last interlocal agreement with the mm -hmm. county. Uh, I have uh, uh, spoken to the county attorney today, provided him a copy, and he asked me also to provide the county administrator and the administrative assistant to the county administrator, which I have done. Uh, it's, the, this change has been approved by them for this contract, but they had no problem last time. Uh, the change, same change that we made, they agreed to. You know, again, this indemnification whole harmless provision that the county crams down on you is uh is not something i want you always to do uh i prefer you never did it uh because under your prior insurance you had the ability to add the county as an additional insurer under the league of cities coverage that you have now you don't and this is providing that you're indemnifying them so there are certain scenarios where you're really not covered by insurance uh, relating to your relationship with the county on some of these transactions. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I made that disclosure to you at the prior, that last time we did one of these contracts too. Uh, and, you know, this one by comparison, some of the others probably has lower risk for exposure for you because of the nature of the service involved. Uh, road paving, for example, the contrast would be a different story. That obviously would have a heightened opportunity from some, for some tort to occur where someone was injured or damaged. So uh, that's all I have uh, for you regarding uh, this item. Uh, what do you need uh, something from us? Or just, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What do you need from us as far as accepting? Uh, you need a motion to approve the interlocal agreement 
as amended. I make a motion that we approve the county local agreement for human services between Jasmine County, Florida, and the city of Chattahoochee as amended. That would give the uh, mayor authority to sign uh, the contract with that. Any discussion from the floor? All of we are the right with us. Everything you want to do, Mayor Kimry? Yes. Williams? Yes. Moultrie? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Glass? Yes. Well, if we have a few things tonight, but I'll try to get through them as quick as we can. First thing is, uh, you know, the legislative session convened yesterday. So they're. Uh, <laughs> getting into their committee meetings and moving forward. We do have three um, legislative requests this year over there. Two of them have been scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, the first one uh, under the Agricultural Natural Resources Appropriations Subcommittee at 10 a.m. in the morning is the one uh, turn on uh, mountain bike trail. And then we have one tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. with Justice Appropriations Subcommittee concerning our request for the uh, Police Department, uh, mainly communication upgrades. So, if anyone is interested in that, of course, it's kind of an odd year. The House is doing a little different from the Senate, but it's kind of hard to get over there and lobby in the committee meetings uh, this year. But just so you'll know, uh, moving two of our items are moving right along in the first week of the session. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is we have the second harvest food distribution is scheduled again for March the 11th. Um, Mr. Williams, Councilman uh, Williams, you know, is back over there with work at the Capitol. So, Mr. Mayor, if I could count on your help, we'll get all hands and the cook in there and see if us men can handle it. But it is it's for the 11th, and it's on the website, the Facebook page. So, spread the word, everyone, and uh, hopefully, we'll have another successful event. The COVID legislation moving to the U.S. Capitol, the bill that you know the House that just passed that's going to the Senate. We're getting more and more information on that, but the city of Chattahoochee currently has kind of funny because it's a range, but it's between 585,000 and 625,000. We have language included in there specifically: the city of Chattahoochee shall receive. So every chance you get. Through your mayor's association or conferences or what you know, uh, we support this bill. Okay. We support it, and uh, I know it looks like it's going to have some difficulty in the Senate. It may get changed, but the wording that passed the House that is what's currently in that word, which is would be a great thing for the city. There are restrictions on what money can be used for. There's a list of things, but it's broad. It's basically it's to 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 replenish our coffers. Yeah, it was. It's a, basically a check. Um, we got ranked uh, set to a ranking last week. Uh, we had applied for two grants, two had approved. One was down at the river, known as the River Landing Grant. The other one was up the trails, up at the park. You know, they tied together, but it was all with those with the uh, walking trails and clearing of those. We tied since it was historic preservation money, and Dale Cox was just instrumental in this, you know, how novel he is about those Indian things, but being a historic preservation grant, it was kind of written around those. The one down at the river included the boardwalks. The number that we had the trouble with, we had actually bid one and low bid with 40 grand. Um, we included those in this project. And it's not, so I'm not saying it's approved and we have the contract, but the ranking was, we were like 21, and looking at the money available, they, they can fund through 28. So we should, now we had another one for up at the park, you know, redoing the bathrooms and the old swimming pool and all that. It was, it did not rank high enough in the money. If someone was to cancel a project, something went bad, we moved up, it is possible. But I feel confident about the River Landing project. That's for 158000 
we had the rebuilt Florida housing thing here. I didn't really get to come up. I hope it was more successful than the ones in the past if you really get a chance, but um, still tons of money out there. When they sat here in the chambers, um, we put it out everywhere we could put it. And they're coming back again. So, for people who own their houses and for primary residents. Or renters. Or renters. Or renters. They, they need to come in here and take advantage of this. There are dollars, lots of dollars. And this one is so late because this one came from the big HUD funding. If you remember, that took forever to come from Washington to the state of Florida. The, the, the source of the money is actually HUD dollars, which came through the state now, and they're trying to spend it. has to be spent here in the, the uh, counties that were affected by Hurricane Michael. Because they didn't have another Tomorrow and the next day. The next two days, they will be here again. Okay. And this is about the third time that we've yeah. done this? This is a different group, but yes, ma'am, this is the third time we've attempted to help people make home repairs. I'm hoping this one is not as cumbersome as the first process was. I don't know that, but. Is it income or labor? How much is it a fixed income that they got to fall upon? That I don't know. Yeah. Right, the last time we had a problem with some of the people they were lending the houses and they were not able to make contact with the owners of the houses to get permission to do the work that needed to be done on the house. Are they, do they still have all of these stipulations? I, it's a whole complete different program. So it won't be the same stipulations, but you know, being a government agency, they're going to have some. But it, my the question I have, because we have so many renters and air property in different scenarios, and they said that it was okay if they rented, if they had damages and so forth. So it's worth the trip up here for the folks. They need to come. This is probably the last opportunity for Hurricane Michael. Nine to three? What time? 10 to 3. 10 to 3. And that's on what day? Tomorrow and Thursday. Right here at this room. Oh. Rebuild Florida. Lots of housing money. Uh, vaccination event. What day was that? It was Friday, wasn't it? Yeah. We, um, I was a little worried when it started off with the registrations right up to the last minute. We, you know, we were on Thursday, we were hovering at 35, but we wound up with 65 up to 80 vaccinations. We started to cook season and told me that was very good. Even at the FAMU side, the one they do in Quincy now, they never use up all the slots because a lot of people have uh, received their vaccination. Mm -hmm. So I was proud that we were able to serve 65 people here in the little Chattahoochee. We were allotted 80, and um, they tell me that's pretty good. So that, that went well. Uh, the Firehouse Subs Grant, I have the information on that now, and you really don't have to take any action. Uh, it wound up being 15434 there's a breakdown of the stuff that it's going to cover. It's basically uh, bunker gear. Uh, there are some hose replacements. Um, you know, pants and coats, that's all the bunker. Hazmat boots, the gauntlet gloves, some new helmets and all that. But we were very thankful that uh, we were able to get this um, from Firehouse Sub. But, you know, they do this nationwide, and I think it's a really good mm -hmm. uh, thing for that corporation to do. But it wound up when I was in the $15,434. And the way they want us to do it, the way they do it, uh, we order the stuff from the supplier of our choosing, and then they pay them. So that's why a formal grant agreement is not coming to you or a contract. They uh, gave us a dollar amount based on, I don't know how they base it on, but they told us to order from the suppliers that we chose to, and then they would just pay them. So the, the gear is coming, it's already ordered. Good. Yeah, probably we, we would like to have a line to draft a letter thanking the public, I mean, the Firehouse Snow Corporation for that. Not at all. I think that would be a good idea. I think it'd be nice to do it all the time. We have to get some more tradition coming to this. Yeah, for that. We'll put it on our website. This is a corporate. There's a picture in that firehouse sub. Uh, Y'all got a grant from them one time before mm -hmm. for the job, and a picture was taken over in front of the station. Yep. 
And I guess they probably do this all over the stuff to try to locate as close as they can, but that photo is in the uh, firehouse photo there, yeah. Maybe you can take another one and send it again? They probably will. Well, you all firefighters up there. Yeah, with a new class Yeah. All right. Um, that's important. We, we're still getting tons of requests. Um, and you can talk at us as a whole thing. You know, we got the lobby, we got the meetings. Uh, the biggest push is, is our facilities for rentals and um, getting a lot now about the base kids, the baseball team. Seems everybody, you know, they're all in playing ball now. Everybody's playing baseball, but it's got to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all are hearing any of anybody calling you or mentioning it to you, but um, just want to get guidance from the council again, update. I mean, do we want to? to try to develop or uh, implement a plan to to start some of it and ease into it? Or do we want to open up, um, set a date to open up? How do y'all want to handle it? I, I, it's really hard for me to respond to the inquiry. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a long personal thing. I think we got to get the kids doing stuff. I think Everything else is opened up. I mean, we got to get back into activity. Like Havana, they've been having sidewalk sales and everything in them Gadsden County. Oh, yeah. I mean, our kids need some outlet. You know, that's also the thing I don't have any problem opening things back up that I want it done safely. Because COVID is still out there. You have different variants out there now. That you have to be aware of. Also, on the safety side. Well, and the safety side. One thing that bothers me, Robert. <clears throat> it seems like in years past we've had a little trouble fielding enough kids to have a team, mm -hmm. and we need to make sure that we're going to have enough kids to have a team. But and then, and then I think that the city showed us some extra responsibility if we're transporting that team mm -hmm. in the city vehicle. To maintain proper safety procedures, and that's what bothers me. Well, when mom told me, they ride the bus. I understand that, but the bus don't have a city chair each on side. Correct. Of the I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we was in school, I was the parents had to carry you. I don't think that's the city's responsibility. I don't. But again, we. I mean, uh, don't want to put all this on you, but I have to, you know, keep bringing it up so that so that we are evaluating it. I mean, we can discuss it again if, if you're still not at that comfort level with we'll discuss it a little. Yeah, I don't want to be real safe on it. I don't want anybody to say, I'm sorry. We, we had, we played baseball, you know, traveling with them to Havana, and they, they came back in June of the 6th. Uh, and it could easily happen. Whether whether it happened on that van or in that clubhouse, it, it, you can still say it did. Yeah. Well, I think what we need to do is just find out if, if we do have that, what other cities are doing or what are their paperwork that's being signed for the liability of the city. But so that's just like now if you go to a hotel, they make you sign a paper saying, okay, well, you're not, you're not liable until you get told. So uh, as far as like with the kids ride, you know, we got insurance that cover, you know, just general insurance. And you don't have to but if we could, uh, but as far as like with the kids riding, that's, that's not a big thing right now. You know, we got insurance because we've been doing it for years. If we got kids that's going to be playing. And that, you know. But that's, excuse yeah. me, to cut you off, but the insurance covers accidents. COVID is not an accident. Well, I, I, I didn't say about COVID. No. I, I, I understand COVID. I said that, that's why I said with COVID, we need to check with other cities. And if there's something where we can get a waiver, that's the check. Then that, that time. But as far as like in the future or whatever, once COVID over, I don't see no problem with the kids like that. I, I, I don't feel like since it's COVID mm -hmm. is the way it is and we don't know who has it, it's an unknown individual. Mm -hmm. If the parents want the children to um, have a baseball team or a softball team, I think the parents should be responsible. Mm -hmm for transporting their own child where they need to go. Then they will know themselves 
need to be very, very careful with this COVID thing. And I'm only talking about the kids. Where I am now, they started twice a week with us having to take the test, the COVID test, because there are so many new versions of this thing that's out there. And I feel like every house should be responsible for their own children mm -hmm. because they can easily say when little Johnny left the house, he was fine. Yes. But when he got back home, by riding on that van, somebody on that van was sick. How are you going to prove it? Remember, we had a line? I mean, is that line? Well, I, I'm urged to turn into being a doctor right now, and, you know, it's, it's a hard line between the, the, mm -hmm. the, health, the public health issues and the lawyering issues. Uh, I try to keep my own prejudices out, but CD, CDC guidelines have not loosened. Yeah, that's your yeah. Yeah. Not at all. The CDC, CDC, CDC has not, has not loosened. Loosened. But the governor is saying open up, can't you bar the doors, open it all up. So you got a choice. And so you got to have common sense to make a concrete decision and move forward. Well, I never want you to politicize public health, okay? So what we got to establish is we're not going to open up the the uh, cabin sports right now in the rest department. That that would be the issue before we do anything. It was not just the sports; it was the rental of the the, the rental seem to be the, the biggest two issues. The biggest issue is the rental, okay. and then the sports has just happened in the last you know couple of weeks right. with the baseball. But now the big issue seems to be the rental. Right, let me ask you this, Mr. Miller. In our, in our paperwork to rent in any of our spaces to a group that will be larger than the 10 gathering at the time, can we word a uh, non responsibility clause to see that you, can, you do this at your own risk and you're responsible for Yeah, but are you worried about responsibility or are you worried about liability? Because right now, that question begs the answer of regarding responsibility. I guess I'm worried about liability. Can, can we do some things where an adult can waive liability exposure? Yes, you can. Is that responsible? That's for you to decide. I mean, that, that I'm back to my guidance is follow the CDC guidelines. Amen. Yeah. So, so with the, like with the direction, if we did get into that, are we, are we saying, just like we got, okay, we're, we're saying we can only, we only let so many people come in, into the, the city hall, you know, mm -hmm. our thing. So are we going to do the same thing with the rest of them? You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I think the so, Crystal, here we have a little bit more control about how many people come in and stay. Right. If, if they were having a, a, a meeting down there on Saturday afternoon and we said, oh, to, to cover proper guidelines, you can only have 27 people come in. Right. After they get in, we have no control of where they are, how they interact with each other. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not. Well, I understand what uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Colonel Miller is saying. They said, you know, we got the power to, you know, be responsible. Yeah. You know, uh, we're going to uh, say we're looking at a lot of military. We're just going to just kind of just leave it then, see, go month by month and just kind of figure it out. Yeah. Right now, I think we need to we need to adhere real closely to the control guidelines. That's just my opinion. I'm going to want to find. And they basically just saying not open it up yet. Right. So if that's the case, we go ahead. Thank you, Gennaro. We'll wait a month, and I'll see you all next month. Yeah. I think you you settled on the side of responsible council. And I will add to that, Mr. Person, that when it's the CDC changes their guidelines before our next meeting, then we can hold a special meeting. Oh, yeah. We can hold a special meeting if they change their guidelines. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't see them changing their guidelines in the near future anyway. So um, we'll see what happens. We know we've had the best five. The governors are headed down now, but the governor of Texas announced today mm -hmm. he wiped the slate clean. Mm -hmm. No mask, no nothing. Texas did that today. We're back in and Mississippi. So we'll see. We'll know something in two weeks. <laughs> but he said we're done with COVID. <laughs> the governor of Texas. Yeah, yeah so, uh, you know, and there are some politics to it. I mean, here in Florida, there are a lot of politics to it. So, but that's fine. I just need to know on clarification. All of us need to be on the same page. Like, as long as we're on the same page, I'm we're doing it. So we're telling the, you know, the, giving the same answer. Update on the city clerk position. As you know, uh, Wendy took a new job with the clerk of court down in, in Liberty County. And uh, we advertised, and she gave notice, and also we had time, we advertised, and we have hired a, a new city clerk that will be starting on March the uh, 15th. She is the currently the finance director for the Gulf County clerk of court. And has been for a while. She uh, originally from Gaston County. She has a hold of a county degree and is a CPA. So then she'll be a great addition into the city. I think you'll all like her. Um, so she'll do a really good job for us. Um, the police chief has turned in his resignation. You know, he is out on leave currently, um, but he has turned in a resignation, which is effective June 15th. Um, so we plan to in the morning advertise. Um, I know she was stuck to do something different, but we were advertising for a police chief here uh, for the city. So that process will take a couple of three weeks. You said June the 15th? No, uh, March the 15th. So she starts on March 15th and he leaves March 15th. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you want to inform everybody about that? I know. Well, um, the police department. Started, uh, once the chief leaves, uh, how, how are we going? Are you having an interim chief? Or I'm the interim, interim police chief. Okay. Yeah, I'm the interim police chief. And, uh, you know, start, we didn't know how long it was going to be, but, but, we, but uh, it's official now, so it's just like, you know, we will advertise that. Okay. And um, you'll see it out on social media and the newspapers and all starting tomorrow. And, um, I think 10 days or 14 days. So, Hopefully, we'll be blessed with uh, some good applications there as we were with clerk's position. So that's that there on that. We have a ribbon cut ceremony at Brandy's place over here. She's fixing up. Its name is Tree Pies. Mm -hmm. um, that is on the 26th at 10 a.m. We're going to do a ribbon cut ceremony, and we're just going to have to social distance. But I want to put one together, you know, for our new family dollar. These new mm -hmm. businesses. We really need to step up and speak for them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, if you could be there, I'd really appreciate it. And then once they open them doors, and I can't stress this enough, we need to support those local businesses. You know, even if, um, you know, I probably won't want anything in this store, they can choose pie, but I'm going to go in there and buy stuff. What are choose pie? Uh, so we're going to be at? I don't know. I asked them what kind of pie they have, but it's, it's, it's girly stuff. Right down here is past the old. Um, yeah, that little. Okay. Yeah. She'd already started a small business in Jackson County okay. and it's done well, I guess, but she's doing some physical retail presence and we're lucky enough to have her here in Chattahoochee. You know, it's a great addition. Um, Lots of gifts and stuff like yeah. that. Awesome. Yeah, I think, I think it'd be a hit here. I mean, I think back to the old knots and such things, you know, I had to run in there and buy stuff when I had to. And so we really need to support it. But the ribbon cutting, you're all invited if you're available, but I know. <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning, some of you work, but um, we do want to support this business. We do support this. We're open for business. And there's some other businesses preparing their buildings right now, and we want to do the same thing when they get closer. Ribbon cuttings, let them know up front, you know, when they have invested their money and think it open the doors. We support you. We're here for you. So I uh, just want to announce that, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Have y'all set up one with Family Dollar yet? No, no, we were holding off because of the COVID, the whole COVID thing, but it's time now, I think, to, yeah. to do that. And there'll be, you know, there'll be several others here. Yeah, it's time. So good news to show you today, but uh, that's all I have. Thank you.
I just had one comment back when we approved that uh, agreement with the county. I, uh, that date of October of uh, 2020 on the, at the top is not an error. This was a fiscal year contract. Okay. So you really just been in a holdover from your prior year. The county just didn't attend to it back uh, in the fall. So uh, look at it later and say, man, what's that mean? Well, uh, that's it. And there's, a, there's a provision at the end that, that uh, uh, deals with the fact that approval is different than the day of the contract. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I've got one thing. That, that gets uh, you'll qualify and begin March the 15th at 12 noon and ends March the 19th at 12 noon and uh, seats up uh, this year two and four. Just to remind everybody, you can go to the supervisor relations or uh, pick up a packet. Thank you for reminding us Mr. Uh, Mr. Goldfish? Uh, thank you everybody for uh, everything that we're doing in the city. I'd like to see that, you know, family dollar and all the other businesses that come here, there's a big difference in that. You know, I see a lot of growth. Uh, City Hall, thank you for everything that y'all are doing, even in the absence of uh, witness. We have not missed a beat. There's not nothing that uh, this council asks of y'all that y'all don't always give a smile. And I know it's hard sometimes working with the public and plus dealing with us quite a bit. But thank you for every time we call on y'all, y'all are just it. Uh, as continuous prayer for my family, I lost my first cousin last night, Quinn Moser. He, he worked with Waco, so you may be even seeing him uh, out and about here in Chattanooga. So, I didn't want to ask a prayer for that. Good to see Dr. Richardson back with us. And um, Ken, we're going to be praying for our mayor that lost, lost his father. I remember back, a little while back, when I first got on the council with Ken, and I called him Mr. Ken. And he said, No, you called my father Mr. Ken, and I'm just Ken. That's right. And that, that says a lot about the way he feels about it there. And so, we we're praying for you and your family. Mm -hmm. and, and the school, uh, Southside Village, whether it works out or not, I'm glad to see us at this point. Uh, for years since I've been here, I always said something about that school. So I'm glad to see us at this point. I'm glad to see that the council and the community have tried their best to try to do something about that. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I should say thank you, Mr. Preston, for all the work that you're doing. Keep your phone open because starting tomorrow, I may have to start calling you all over again. I've already talked with uh, some of the representatives and the senators. Actually, I'm please don't forget Chattanooga. We over here on the island of our temple. We're trying to make it. So there may be some questions that I might need to help with. Okay, we can. Uh, you know, when I met with the governor last month, too, I told him and his wife, you know, if uh, we weren't successful, I was going to have to put him out. <laughs> okay. But I thank you for all the work. And please tell your workers, because you can't do it all by yourself. Please tell them that I said thank you so very, very much for working so hard with me with the uh, second harvest project that we have every month. Uh, because not one time have they said no to me for coming up, helping me to sit up and working, going out into the community and each one of the city areas that I'm asking them to work, they're, they're diligently doing that. Please tell them thank you. So oh, yeah. I like to tell the people at City Hall, uh, since Ms. Lindy's been gone, I've been calling them, but not one time have they said no, that they could not do what I asked them to do. I thank you so very, very much. Keep the good ones up. Hear nothing but good things about you all. And I'm hoping that we can continue to go forward 
making the city to be a better place for the citizens to live in. Mr. Kimmery, I am so sorry that you lost your father. Mm -hmm. You never lost your father when you don't know what I'm talking about. Mr. Miller, I wasn't on me. I needed a class. Yes, I asked it on how they have they scheduled it yet. Well, what was that? Oh, the class no. And you don't have any ideas for when we make it. No, it'll be this year. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be, yeah, if it's me, I'm going to be sitting in my office in front of my computer talking to you. Okay. All right. Looking forward to it. Yeah. As soon as I know, I'll, I'll let them know if you're Could you just set it up with like all the small municipalities around here? Could you set it up yourself? Um. Well, they've done all the certification work, and I've not done that independently. Okay. I was going to say, I know that there's so many small municipalities around here that it'd be, it'd probably be full. Yeah. I don't have prayers in me about 15 minutes. <laughs> you know better. <laughs> and Mr. Moser, I'm so sorry I got the cancer. Your nephew, um, we put him in New York together. Example Church, and I will call give his mother a, a call. Miss Ann, we are so glad to have you back at that team to keep uh, Mr. Moultrie under control. We might have to move her next to him next time so she can show up. Oh, well. And I'd like to thank Chattahoochee for all of the work that they've done. I've gotten several calls. And the, and the citizens are really, really interested in making this city a better place to live. Because if they weren't, they wouldn't call the way that they've been called. I like to tell them thank you so very, very much, keeping up the breath of what it is that we did not see or pay attention to, that we can go out there and try and get the work done. Thank you. Griffin? Like I gave last night a concern. Um, on last night, I was really sick, and I called Mr. Fisher. I was like, I ain't gonna be able to make it. I'm just not gonna be able to make it. I can't get out this bed. So thank you guys for your concern. I just like to thank everybody, all the citizens of Chattahoochee. Um, and I know you guys will probably be upset about the theater not opening now, but I work at a hospital, and I see these things every day. And safety is first. There are many new barriers out there, and you just got to be careful. And it doesn't matter that you had COVID because a new barrier is something different from what you've had. So I'm just safety first, and I'm really sorry that it's safety first right now. I want our kids to be safe, us to be safe, our workers to be safe, because safety is first. So thank you, guys. Great. Um, I Cats and dogs. I've been having some complaints about them. Can you get up with animal control and tell them to check around because they're really on Main Street they're everywhere. Okay, they're not, they don't really belong to the yard. They're no, they're just everywhere. They're not. Yeah, my neighbor, the one behind me, they belong to them, but. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's what you're going to say? Um, <laughs> I want to appreciate the thank y'all for stepping up. I know it's hard to take in your job and somebody else's job, but y'all have done a great job. Um, thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you, police station. I mean, Tahoe's going smooth right now. Let's keep, I appreciate all y'all are doing to keep us safe. And the workers, the city workers, thank you. When the water line busted, they came out, did it, got done. Um, electricity goes off. So there, we've got some of the best workers that you can have. And I sometimes think they feel unappreciated, but they are very much appreciated. Every time that electricity goes out, I thank the Lord for it. Every time there's a police call, my, the police show up. Um, and I thank you, Mr. President, for putting the city first and trying to get it to where it needs to be and back. And to all the new business people that 
Won't the time to tell him? Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're helping us bring back our old set of hatred. <clears throat> Nothing. Well, on the, on the water supply for the economic, I mean, for the uh, neighborhood of the valorization, I didn't you talk one time several months ago about uh, some problems that you had when the water line was, was ruptured or was damaged and you'd have contamination going into some of the houses? So, yeah, we, we talked about not being uh, notified when the lines were off or whatever and water came back on. Uh -huh. You know, there's some people who were working or whatever when they got home and the water was contaminated, different colors or whatever, and, and they had no notification to it. You know, we get a lot of air issues and the, the cloudy water and all that because of the looking it back up. Is there some kind of system of balance that we could put maybe with these <coughs> that would reduce the amount of no, I don't think you could do that. The only thing, maybe if you uh, did the door hangers or something in the affected areas, okay. which I think is what I was kind of suggested last time. So uh, the, the work itself, you know, cutting the new line in and charging it, you're going to have air issues and, and pressure. People's pressures are going to change. And, you know, it's just different, especially when it's been that way for 30 years. Yeah. You know, so. Maybe the door hanger public information uh, effort would answer that. the questions or reduce some of the questions. Maybe we should include that in some of the Ooh. information. That yeah, we could do because we know what streets we'll be charging. Uh -huh. You know, when we crank it back up. Okay, very good. Do you have any upcoming meetings that we need to plan for besides the uh, ribbon cutting at ten on the twenty sixth? Anything else that we need? To not unaware of until we schedule some more. Um, go through the food distribution. The ribbon code. And, don't, and I want to thank the church here on Mount Washington that does the farm fair. Mm -hmm. I appreciate them doing that for our citizens. That's a very good community outreach. A lot of food coming through here. Well, no, I, I want to meet them, but they never do when I come back. Thank you so much for all y'all do. Anything else? We're done. <laughs>